first question to you is how did you stumble across Emma Wash's novel and what made you want to turn it into a series? Well, I actually had a friend bring it to me um, thinking it would be up my alley and uh, she was right. I love things that blend comedy and pathos and I love books that have a light sci-fi element um, uh, that allows you to talk about the human condition from a slightly left of center perspective. So um, it felt like a great book to adapt because the theme of what is potential and what if you could be told your life's potential, what would you do as a result, um, felt so rich for a series and such an interesting concept to explore from different perspectives through different characters. So it was really fun taking that core idea and the spirit of the book and then spinning it off in all sorts of new directions with new characters for the series. Yeah, one of the things I find interesting is for like the second consecutive show, you found this way of blending comedy and drama. How hard is it to make that mix work so both aspects come off authentic? I mean, I'm I'm naturally attracted to character-driven uh, comedy, and I think casting the right people who can balance that tone, who uh, even when they're being really funny, they're being real, you know, that they're authentic as, as these characters, then you're willing to go with them to the, to the more broad places as well as the darker places. And they always feel like a human being. So I credit the cast for, for balancing that. Tone. Was it like bringing that Morpho machine to life? It was really fun. I mean, it's a different machine from what's in the book. We wanted something that was a little more magical, almost like the Zoltar machine in, in the movie Big, where it, it seems kind of dated and primitive on the surface, but it's imbued with this mystical significance when people use it and it tells them something they want to be told about themselves. Um, and then our production designer, Diane Lederman, did such an amazing job uh, translating this idea of a morpho butterfly into a, a physical machine. Um, it, I think it's really special. Yeah, I, I loved how unique it was. And, and and take me behind the idea of picking the color. Like, what was that like? I mean, I know blue was, there's a specific, was there a specific reason it was blue? Anything like yeah, that? Yeah, for sure. Um, the blue morpho butterfly itself is this incredibly vibrant blue. But what I loved about that specific butterfly is that it isn't actually that color. It's the way that the light is reflected off it, its wings that gives it this vibrancy. So it's all kind of an illusion. And that felt interesting to me for a machine that is promising to tell you uh, what it means to be happy. Um, and then uh, uh, the color blue within our show uh, doesn't exist until the Morpho machine arrives. And that was a rule I set out for our designers and our you know, costumes and our props, and everything, that it's like this color of blue didn't even exist in Deerfield. So when the machine arrives and suddenly you're looking at these cards and people are making the shirts, it feels like an entirely new element has arrived as, as people are exploring an entirely new side of themselves. Yeah, my final question to you, obviously we have this Italian restaurant, which first off the the design of the spaghetti with the with the hockey thing was incredible. I loved it. I like I wanted that's like a paperweight now. But <laughs> <laughs> what is your go to order at an Italian restaurant? I mean, if I were somewhere like Giorgio's, I'd probably get the spaghetti tower with meatballs, um, which is you know, we wanted it to be the biggest spaghetti tower imaginable. There are also like sticks and things in that uh, in that plate of spaghetti to make it possible to be that high. Uh, that would be my go-to spaghetti and meatballs. Mm -hmm.